In the County of Kings, everyone goes hard. So when you go to a Nets game, do it right with an all-access membership. Get in on the Brooklyn Taste Program, free beer and wine pregame, and never pay a dime for food at concession stands. Go hard. It's the Brooklyn way. Call 718-NETS-TICKS or visit brooklynnets.com slash all-access. This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do. Every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio. That's 710 ESPN LA. That's 98.7 FM, New York City. And, of course, nationwide over the airways of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Got a jam-packed show coming your way today. First things first, let me apologize for skipping out yesterday. I had to travel back from Las Vegas, as most of you know. I was on the road interviewing interviewing Floyd Money Mayweather for his upcoming fight against Conor McGregor um, on August 26th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, At the time, uh, the only flight that was going to get me out was during the time that I was doing radio. Uh, Outside of that, I would have had to wait until 9 or 10 o'clock at night to get the hell out of town. And I could not afford to do that yesterday, needing to be back in town on this particular day. So that is why I was gone yesterday. My apologies to all of you. I missed you as well. I am back. I am here. A couple of things that I'm going to get into. Sitting down with Floyd Money Mayweather. Look, he's a salesman. Let's just call it what it is. Listening to Floyd Money Mayweather, you would think that Conor McGregor has a chance. Floyd McGregor, this is Floyd Mayweather, and I'll play, I'll play a couple of minutes, a few minutes of my interview with him for you in about 30 minutes or so. I'll play some of it for you, but if you listen to Floyd Money Mayweather, Conor McGregor's bigger. He's stronger. Obviously, being in the UFC, more physical, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Floyd did everything but call a man Superman. Did everything but call him Superman. Clearly, you're trying to sell a fight, because ain't no way in hell, I believe, that Conor McGregor has more than a 1% chance. That 1% chance would be due to the fact that the dude has power. He packs power in his punch, and I don't. And, and you always give a punch a 1% chance. I'm not Max Kellerman talking about, oh, Floyd won't even get touched. I think that's ridiculous. Max said he won't even get touched in the body. But I don't want to sit up there and paraphrase. You know I'm going to have my man Max Kellerman, who does first take with me every week. You know I'm going to have him on this show with me before that fight. Make no mistake about it. He doesn't he think it's an insult to even think that Floyd will get touched. Fair enough. I don't think he'll get touched either, but I do think it's possible. And that's why I'll give uh, Conor McGregor a 1% chance. But that's it. Nothing else. But Floyd seems poised. Floyd seems ready. Obviously, he's always in shape. And uh, listen, he never comes into the ring unprepared. He's trying to downplay it, but at the same time, Conor McGregor talking as much smack as he's talked to Floyd. I think the one thing that Floyd said to me that was just more ridiculous than anything was when he said, you know, if I lose, I still got my money. I'm still going to cash the check at the end of the night. And on top of it all, I'll have, hope I'll have my health intact and I'll have my family and loved ones. Come on now. You don't go 49 and 0 for nothing and then don't care about your resume, your legacy. If Floyd Money Mayweather loses this fight, It will be the biggest upset in the history of boxing because when has the self-proclaimed best in the world, someone who's universally recognized as one of the greatest ever, without question arguably the greatest defensive fighter of all time, you lose to a guy that's never boxed professionally in his career? As far as I'm concerned, Conor McGregor has no business in the ring with Floyd Money Mayweather. I asked Floyd about whether or not that did a disservice to boxing, that you allowed this dude to get into the ring with you. Obviously, he had an answer for everything. And during the next few days and weeks to come before this fight, I will be airing snippets of my interview with him for you. 866-729-ESPN is the number to call it. It's 866-729-3776. Do y'all give Conor McGregor any kind of chance whatsoever? My chance is at 1%. What's your percentage? I'm really interested in knowing. Now let me get to something else, because I did my uh, just just talking to a few people last few days, last few hours. 
One of my boys in particular, very, very knowledgeable about the NBA. Um, I had the pleasure of talking to him over an hour ago. And we were talking about two things, CP3 and Carmelo Anthony. Now, for those of you who were living under a rock and you don't know, CP3 exercised uh, the opt-out clause in his contract, um, you know, was going to leave the Los Angeles Clippers instead, got traded to the Houston Rockets. Did y'all know that CP3 turned down five years? The Clippers were going to offer him a fifth year. That was going to elevate his salary to $207 million. He turned it down. Clearly betting on himself in Houston with James Harden, believing that whatever level of success he's able to capture by being James Harden, being in Houston with James Harden, will definitely put him in a position to make a max deal. Somebody pointed out something very, very um, um, tricky about that. Steve Ballmer, the owner for the Los Angeles Clippers, loves him some, some, some CP3. Loves CP3. Somehow during that press conference involving Patrick Beverly and those boys, you see how happy Doc Rivers looked? Doc Rivers don't look too phased that Chris Paul's gone, you know. So you got that element going on. If your CP3 is scheduled to make $24.268 million this upcoming season, is it right? Fim, 33 years of age, I think, to bet on himself. Is it right for him to turn down five years, over $200 million? And is it smart and right for him to do so? With Houston in the throes of about to, uh, you know, uh, they're about to get new ownership. That's something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. And one of the other things I think it's worthy of thinking about, particularly if you're right here in New York City, I'm going to tell you something right now. I love me some Carmelo Anthony. He's starting to really get to me. Because some of the decisions that, that, that are being made are really raking my nerves. Yes, Carmelo Anthony should get the hell out of New York. And yes, he has told the New York Knicks that. Fair enough. But this commitment, this fixation on ending up in Houston, I don't understand it. Because on one hand, clearly, you got your, he's represented by CAA, just like CP3 is. Guess what? Both of y'all are in Houston. The chances, at least in your eyes, increases of you getting paid because if you're playing together, you're going to have success together, and Daryl Morey and the Houston Rockets are going to be compelled to take care of you. But guess what? That was with Les Alexander as the owner. You don't know if the new owner of the Houston Rockets, whoever that may be, is going to end up feeling that way. So why take that chance? That's point number one. Point number two, if you're Carmelo Anthony, for once, could you do me a favor, please, and bet on yourself? Could you do that? Could you stop looking for the guaranteed dollars and bet on yourself? Carmelo Anthony is one of the most prolific scorers of the modern-day era. It's going to be a basketball Hall of Famer, not because of his NBA career, but his overall basketball career, collegiately and Olympic competition. And the fact that he averaged 24.7 points per game for his career. But like I said, more so because of Olympic competition and collegiate basketball as opposed to the NBA career, where he's only been in one conference finals and has never played in an NBA finals in 14 years. I love me some mellow. But I'm like, damn. Can, can, can you hook up with LeBron? Can you get to Cleveland? Can you can you can you can you get back? Can you get to a NBA Finals? Because if you are the New York Knicks, you ain't trying to work out no deal with Houston for no damn Ryan Anderson. You talking Kyrie? That's a different conversation. Not no damn Ryan Anderson. So these are all things to consider. 866-729-ESPN is always the number to call. It's 866-729-3776. We're talking Mayweather-McGregor. We're talking Carmelo. You heard what I said to you about CP3. And no, I have not forgotten about Colin Kaepernick because nobody will let me. The story just won't go away. Petition has been signed by over 130,000 people and counting. 
And supposedly, that's going to do wonders for Colin Kaepernick. I'm here to tell you why it might not. And why the time for sympathy for him needs to come to an end. 866-729-ESPN is the number to call up. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Now listen up. Listen up, America. I know a lot of you have already gotten a zebra. Are you getting happy Z's as a result? Guess what? You're welcome. As for the rest of you, what's the holdup? There are too many of you snoring and being a nuisance to everybody around you, and you need to stop procrastinating and deal with this now. And the only way to do that is to get zebra. Why do I know there are millions still snoring? Because I used to be one of you. That's why. And guess what? Once I got a zebra, all of that stuff stopped. I don't snore like I used to. Matter of fact, I don't snore at all because Zipa gets reports every time I talk about their product on my radio show. They know you went to their website, Zipa.com. They know you clicked through all the five-star testimonials and watched the video proving it works. They know you've listened to me tell you it works. They also know that you actually went through the process of putting a Zipa in your shopping cart. Now finish the process and get a Zipa already. Listen, people, your snoring is not going to stop until you get a Zipa. I don't care what it costs. Sleep is priceless. You would know this if you got a Zipa. He read the message inside the box. I'm telling you to get a Zipa right now. Stop procrastinating. Go to Zipa.com. That's Z-Y-P-P-A-H.com. Remember, Zipa is happy Z, spelled backwards. Your calls and more in a minute as we continue on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, Switching to GEICO could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! GEICO. Because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Let me tell you something right now. Welcome back to Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. As I talked about Mayweather and, and, and Carmelo Anthony and CP3 and all of that stuff, I'm just I'm just looking at CP3 and I'm like, you're fantastic. Superstar point guard as far as I'm concerned. Making $24 million this year, but you could add 200 And you're betting on yourself on a new team that's now about to get new ownership. And CAA, b- being the brilliant agency that they are, probably conjured up the idea of Melo and CP3 together in Houston trying to make that happen. But the problem arises from that because your thinking is that you get the both of them together, that's the best chance to get both of them paid. My point is, if you're Melo, what happened to winning? Why would you want to go out west? Because, by the way, the Golden State Warriors aren't the only opposition. San Antonio Spurs are no joke. And, oh, by the way, The Oklahoma City Thunder are a threat. Russell Westbrook and Paul George are not chopped liver. And Cantor and Adams and those boys can do some things as well. It's not a foregone conclusion that Melo, CP3, and James Harden goes to Houston and they go to the conference finals. That is not a foregone conclusion. It absolutely, positively is not. So it's going to be real interesting. Now let me get to Colin Kaepernick. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here today telling you that I still support this man. I think there are at least 30 jobs that he, you know, 30 people that have jobs ahead of him. 30. Some starters, mostly reserves, but there is no question that Colin Kaepernick, from a talent perspective, should be in the National Football League. There's no question in my mind he's being blackballed or whiteballed. I feel that same. I feel I feel exactly that way. And I also feel that there's a lot of naysayers out there and critics out there of Colin Kaepernick who should really check themselves because guess what? If you want to tout the red, white, and blue, the American flag, and what we stand for as a nation. Shouldn't you be applauding the fact that he exercised his First Amendment rights and privileges, his constitutional rights, how his protest was peaceful, how he harmed no one, and more importantly, he broke no laws? 
That's more than we could say for Zach Randolph for the Sacramento Kings. Who just got arrested, busted with weed, and had so much weed on them that the police in, uh, labeled it intent to sell. Which, by the way, is bogus. Bogus. I, 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 I find that kind of charge reprehensible. Because somebody has an X amount of, of weed on them, you're going to attach the stigma of intent to sell? You don't have any proof that Zach Randolph wasn't going to smoke all of that himself? Or that he was going to share with his crew that he was with? That's not selling. So I really am opposed to that. But the biggest culprit in all of that is Zach Randolph, because what the hell are you doing putting yourself in that kind of situation? Breaking laws. Smoking weed. Can't stay off the weed. The hell are you doing? I like Zach Randolph, so I'm very disappointed in him right now. Very disappointed that he put himself in this position. But I don't want to hear that stuff about intent to sell. I don't believe that for one second. The man just signed a, a two-year, $24 million extension. He's made over $150 million in his career. Don't tell me that he was on the street trying to sell some, some pot. That's just insulting. It's ridiculous. I don't believe it. TMZ and the other news report said that the only reason they said intent to sell was because of the amount of weed he had on him. So the police automatically label it based on the amount that you have in your person. I just disagree with that philosophy. But Zach Randolph is still a culprit in all of this. Make no mistake. Back to Ka- Kaepernick. That hasn't broken any laws. And if you're a naysayer or a critic, where's your compassion? Where's your support for somebody who exercised the very rights you say this country is founded upon? However, now that we've got that aside, we have to, for at least one final time, get very, very real about Colin Kaepernick. Because as this protest is percolating and it's supposed to be protests outside the the wall, the, the doors of the NFL headquarters on August 23rd, and all, ladies and gentlemen, I agree with my man Joe Madison. Urban View, Sirius XM, Channel 126, every weekday morning from 6 to 10 a.m., a man that I love and revere, to be quite honest with you, simply for the work that he does and what he means to the African-American community because he's incredibly important. I got to tell y'all, I was driving in my car just listening to him yesterday. I had a few minutes in the car and I caught him. He's like, this protest with Colin Kaepernick ain't going to work. He's probably right. Joe Madison's probably right. Probably, I I wouldn't say probably, he's absolutely right. It's not going to work. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen to Colin Kaepernick. But it damn sure ain't going to be because of some protest. Billionaire owners ain't trying to feel that. They're worried about their bottom line. And last time I checked, arguments could be made that Colin Kaepernick had a detrimental effect on the bottom line, not a positive one. He might have sold more jerseys to some degree and all of this other stuff. But at the end of the day, NFL fan base, if they go somewhere, that's where your real trouble lies. It doesn't lie in the reality if they don't go anywhere. And if you're Colin Kaepernick, ladies and gentlemen, can we support him and hold him accountable at all at the same time? I think we can. We can support him because the attention that he that he strove to bring to police brutality, racial injustices, it's honorable and he's to be supported. But he was also the one that said, He don't vote. He was wrong to say that. Let's take it a step further. Ray Lewis is behind the scenes trying to help you. Steve Bashotti is on the record openly acknowledging that he considers he's considering you. The Ravens and coach John Harbaugh and Ozzie Newsom clearly are pushing him to consider you. And you respond, albeit not you directly, your girlfriend, but that is your lady. By putting out a tweet that depicted Steve Bashotti as a slave owner and Ray Lewis as the quintessential house you know what. Using the characters Leonardo DiCaprio to to, to depict Steve Bashotti as him and Ray Lewis 
as Samuel L. Jackson in the movie Django. Highly insulting, highly incendiary. Ray Lewis was done with Colin Kaepernick from the moment that happened. I would know because I spoke to Ray Lewis. Was on the phone with him. Within the hour, he was done with him. Because you can't insult a black man any worse than that. And if you're the billionaire Bashadi, you're like, excuse me? And you know what that was tantamount to? Ray Lewis and his idiot, I'm sorry, not Ray Lewis, Ray Rice and his idiotic self. Now, we all know about the video and and, and, and hitting the, 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 the fiancé who's the then wife. And Ray Rice has done Extra, has put forth an extraordinary effort in terms of rec, er, resurrecting himself and and correcting his mistakes. And he's to be applauded for that. But the one thing we never focused on nearly enough is that in his zest to talk about how he was telling the truth, to stick out his chest and try to take credit for being honest, remember that same owner, Steve Bashotti, had emailed him during the situation, telling him, we got you. We just need to let this die down. We're going to come to your aid. And you dime him out instead of being quiet. Just shut up. And the billionaire is going to come back and take care of you because of a situation you put yourself in. That billionaire owner that had nothing to do with you being in Atlantic City and hitting your fiance with a left hook. Shawty ain't had nothing to do with that. But you want to dime him out when all he was trying to do to help you. You Colin Kaepernick and you let your lady send out some tweet like that while you trying to get a job. Now, that's not your fault. She's a grown woman and she can decide to do whatever she wants to do. But obviously, because she's your lady and she's talking about you in the throes of this situation, she's a reflection of you. So when she did it, you're going to get blamed for that. And that's what happened. And then we turn around, and then we got to take into account the Miami situation. Yes, you took your stance last year. Did you have to go to Did you have to go to Miami and wear a Fidel Castro T-shirt when you knew that thirty four percent of the population there was Cuban? Did you have to do that? All I'm saying is, we're so busy talking about who's victimizing Colin Kaepernick that we haven't spent nearly enough time talking about how Colin Kaepernick has victimized himself. Maybe if we focused on that, a real resolution will arrive. Quite possibly sooner than later. Just a thought. Just a thought. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. More of your phone calls. Plus, I'll hear a piece of my Mayweather interview from a couple of days ago. Stick around. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. I've always loved that beat. Always loved that beat. Welcome back. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Um, before I go back to the phones, I wanted to say something. And I wanted to get back Um to that uh to that conversation that I was having or that conversation I was having with you about Zach Randolph, new member of the Sacramento Kings, um recently arrested uh on charges of uh possession of marijuana with an intent to sell. And you see, <clears throat> because of the amount that he had on him the police are allowed to label it intent to sell. Ladies and gentlemen, as an aside, I just want to sit up here and point out something to you. This is the kind of stuff that rakes the nerves of minorities in this country to no end. He has possession of marijuana, call it possession of marijuana. But when just because he has an X number, um, X amount, you're allowed to label that intent to sell. That attaches a far more insidious and vicious connotation to it. And when something like that happens, you get stigmatized in ways that you may not be able to recover from. And if it wasn't 
Zach Randolph, and it was just Joe Blow on the streets. And he didn't—he wasn't an NBA player who's made in excess of 150 million in his career, who just signed a two-year, 24 million dollar contract, 24 million dollar deal with the Sacramento Kings. Where would he be left? Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to go and watch this documentary on Netflix. It's called Thirteenth. The director is, is Ava DuVernay. This documentary is so sensational, I can't put it into words. It's hard for me to do that. They sit up there and they talk about this, is what they say about it. In this thought-provoking documentary, scholars, activists, and politicians analyze the criminalization of African Americans and the U.S. prison boom. And it starts out with words from our former president, Barack Obama, talking about the United States makes up 5% of the world's population. But it has 25% of the world's prisoners. One in four human beings. Shackled. One in four. Right here in the land of the free. 1972, the prison population in this country was 300,000. As of 2016, it was 2.3 million. Part of the reason that folks would tell you and black folks will complain ad nauseum about what's going on in this world and what, 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 what hinders us and all of this other stuff. And we'll talk about the recidivism rate in the prison system and beyond or, and all of that other stuff. It's also the very reason why Hillary Clinton is not president right now. Two million less people from the African-American community came out to vote for her than voted for Barack Obama. One of the biggest reasons is because every time you heard her name, so many people brought up the terminology that she used, super predators in the 90s when her husband was president. They talk about how Bill Clinton contributed to the criminalization of minorities. They point to the apology that he made while she was running for president. They talked about Ronald Reagan's war on drugs. They talked about George H.W. Bush throwing an additional $1.5 billion into law enforcement. They talked about crack cocaine. On grandma, crack cocaine being equal. 100 grams of powdered cocaine and how it was cracking in the city. But cocaine elsewhere. How we talk about Lynn Bias, that former great star out of the University of Maryland who got drafted number two overall by the Boston Celtics, who was supposed to take the Boston Celtics into a new era because he was supposed to be partnering with Larry Jane or Larry Bird near the twilight of Larry Bird's career. But how that cocaine overdose killed him. And did you know, while so many people thought it was crack, it was powdered cocaine that killed Lynn Bias? They didn't talk about that in the 13th, the documentary, the 13th. But that's something that I read elsewhere. And what I'm saying to you is that it was powdered cocaine, but it was still used as an excuse for politicians to spearhead a war on drugs. And the war on drugs were the drugs that were funneling through the inner city community, contributing to the incarceration rate that has decimated so many families throughout this nation. You see why I'm bringing this up when it comes to Zach Randolph? The man makes $150 million in his career. He's made $150 million. He signed a two-year, $24 million deal. Don't tell me he was on the street dealing weed. Because he had a certain amount on his person. I'm not defending him. It's stupid to find himself in that position, irresponsible, and he should be ashamed of his damn self. I got it. But don't tell me he was selling. When all you have as evidence is the amount he had in his pocket. That's not selling. That is not selling. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. 
to the phones we go. Sorry, I couldn't play that uh, Floyd Mayweather. I'll get to that a little bit later. Got my man, uh, Lewis Riddick, coming on the show at the top of the 2 o'clock hour. We got to talk about Deshaun Watson, Christian McCaffrey, and some of the stuff that we've been seeing going on in the NFL over the past couple of weeks. Lewis Riddick will be the man to talk to. He is always welcome on this show. Let's get to the phones. I just had to touch on that from um, a prison perspective and some of the things. Listen, I'm not one that makes excuses like that. You do the crime, you do the time. I don't have patience for that. And I don't have patience for people so quick to throw out the race card. Every Just because people are white or black doesn't mean that they're a certain way no matter what. I'm about fairness. But this stuff is ridiculous. When the dots are there to be connected, the dots are there to be connected. And when it comes to that intent to sell charge, I find that to be bogus. Chief in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Stephen A., no, I'm a longtime listener, and I've been trying to reach you ever since that day Colin first announced he didn't vote, and you had one of your famous diatribes and said, cut off that afro. I uh, never, hold on, I, I've got it. I don't recall telling him to cut off that afro, so, but go ahead. Yeah, you. I, I heard it. I was listening. A lot of people were saying that I could have played some sound or whatever. I didn't give a damn about the afro. That was Michael Vick. I cared about him not voting, though. I definitely went off about that, but go ahead. Yeah, well, you and Michael Vick both said it. I heard you live. I heard him live. And both y'all had a tone of hatred when you said it. Okay. And I am, I'm 66. I've been wearing afros for 66 years. And sir, hold on, hold on. So when you, sir, sir. When you 66, said, 66 years of age, I am definitely going to respect my elders, sir. But I sincerely hope that you didn't wait on this phone to talk to me. And we're going to evol- evolve this discussion around an afro. I sincerely hope that you have something far more serious to say than the, the issue about an afro. Go ahead. Well, there, there are millions of black and uh, men and women having afros, law-abiding citizens, oh, Lord. who don't have jobs and are intentionally not being hired. And that's one of the reasons Kaepernick is taking the knee in the first place. He's not taking the knee for himself. He's taking the knee for the people who are not so being with all due heard. Respect, so, so with all due respect, who doesn't know that? Well, with all due respect, a lot of people don't know the Afro is the original hairdo of the human race on this planet, going back over 6,000 years. Okay, let me ask you this question. Do you think those billionaires who employ folks in the NFL care about that? I am not interested in what they care about. Yeah, oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 sir! But Colin Kaepernick clearly is because yeah, he's trying to get I'm a job asking, because he's trying to get a job in the NFL, and that's the issue. I'm asking you why you said it. Well, my position I'm is asking that, you well, why well, you said cut off that afro with a hate. Well, first of you all, for, well, first of all, when, well, first of all, I'm trying to answer your question. If you, first of all, I don't, you know, you're going to say I sound like I hate. I don't hate anybody. I hate what people do from time to time. I hate when people get in their own way. In the case of Colin Kaepernick, my issue with Colin Kaepernick was his refusal, was his willingness to come out and acknowledge he doesn't vote. That was my issue with him. I don't particularly care about the subject of an Afro. I don't care. What I care about is the fact that he announced to the world that he doesn't vote. That was my issue with him. The reason I'm calling you is because you said cut off that afro. Well, again, I'm telling you Michael, right now, I don't, re- I don't recall saying it, and I don't particularly care about it. If I did say it, I'm telling you that it doesn't mean much to me. It just doesn't. The subject for me was him not voting. That's the subject for me. That's, that's what matters to me. Well, what matters to me is that the original hairdo of the human race is being demonized and, and portrayed as dangerous. It's similar to, to Mark Cuban when in, in his comment about Trayvon Martin wearing a hoodie and looks so dangerous. And when Zuckerberg from Facebook wears a hoodie in the office, he's a hero. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mark Cuban is the same guy that came on the air and said that, you know what, if he saw a guy in a hoodie, he'd walk to the next uh, across the street, just like if he saw a skinhead, he'd walk across the street. He well, said he said if he wore if he saw a white skinhead, he'd walk across the street. So he, why is it so why is it that you're bringing up the hoodie, but you're not bringing up the second part of that comment when Mark Cuban said if somebody was white but was a skinhead, he'd be just as scared of them. 
Uh, why did you Why did you ignore that? I never heard him say that. Oh, you didn't hear that part. So you heard the part that you, you, you don't like the fact about the hoodie. You don't like the fact about the afro. You heard that crystal clear. But the other part that he said when it came to him pointing out how a white individual who's a skinhead with tattoos all over his head, he'd walk across the street for them, too. You didn't hear that one, did you? No. Okay. I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. I'll keep that in mind. We can't have selective hearing. Mark Cuban wasn't talking about just black people. He talked about white folks. He talked about imagery and presentation. And more importantly, he talked about something that's very, very real. I had no problem whatsoever with what Mark Cuban had to say. Nothing. He was just being honest. In America, you have a right to be honest about what you fear, just like somebody has a right like Chief did when he called up to correct you on that. But what he wants to focus on is the Afro. Okay, well, what if an employee in America said, I don't want you having a damn Afro and being employed by my company? What you going to do? I got a right to wear an Afro. Yeah, okay, and he has a right not to hire you. Now what? That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. In the county of Kings, everyone goes hard. So when you go to a Nets game, do it right with an all-access membership. Get in on the Brooklyn Taste Program, free beer and wine pregame, and never pay a dime for food at concession stands. Go hard. It's the Brooklyn way. Call 718-NETS-TICKS or visit brooklynnets.com slash all-access. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two of the Stephen A. Smith Show here with you. Over the airways of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80. Coming at you as I love to do every weekday. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. It's always my pleasure to have my next guest on the line. NFL analyst and insider extraordinaire. Does a phenomenal job uh, for the family, for ESPN. He's right here with yours truly, the one and only Louis Riddick is on the phone with me right now. What's going on, man? How are you? How are you doing? Stephen A. Stephen A., what's up, man? Always good to talk to you, man. First of all, what excited you most about what you saw last night? We saw Deshaun Watson. We saw Christian McCaffrey. We saw Cam Newton on the sidelines. What excited mm-hmm. you most? What did you peel from it? Well, I, I think two things. One, I, I just I just like how the young guys in this draft class overall, and I think you're seeing this more and more in the NFL because of how expectations are ramped up. The young guys are grabbing the bull by the horns, man, and taking advantage of these opportunities. And I think the quarterback position in particular may be in better shape than maybe we thought originally as far as how some of these young guys are adapting. You look at Deshaun last night, and obviously you saw the things that you thought you would see. You saw you saw you you thought you would see tremendous athleticism in the pocket and tremendous pocket awareness. Some of the things that, quite honestly, some guys have really struggled with RG3 is the first guy that comes to mind that struggled with pocket awareness, how to navigate the pocket, keep his eyes down the field and still be a passer. Deshaun has that. It's just in him. And that's something that really you don't have to teach him. He just knows how to do it. You saw the athleticism outside the pocket. You saw arm strength. You saw him put some balls in some really good places. You saw some things he needed to work on as far as accuracy, 10, 15, well, let's just say 15 plus yards down the field, which he struggled with a little bit at Clemson, but he's going to get that. So I'm excited for him, it's just a matter of time. Christian McCaffrey, on the flip side, excited as heck for what he's going to do, not only for himself and for the running back position overall, but what he's going to do for the Carolina Panthers and Cam Newton in particular. And once they get their full arsenal of people out on the football field and Cam's healthy and he can get some reps with these guys, Christian's going to show you he's not a guy to be taken lightly. He's not a guy to put in a box and say he's just a specialty player. This kid's legit. He'll run the ball from the backfield. He'll run the ball downhill between the tackles. He'll get outside on the perimeter and make you look stupid, and he's going to do it. And they got another guy right now who's kind of in the training room who isn't healthy right now named Curtis Samuel from Ohio State who's faster than Christian, who will also make you look – Carolina is not going to be a team to be messed with offensively this year once they get everybody going. So I'm excited about the young guns really stepping up so far. 
Talking to Lewis Riddick right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. We asked the question on first take this morning, who do we anticipate will have the better rookie year, Deshaun Watson or Christian McCaffrey? I went to Cap- the McCaffrey right l- l- route, Lewis, because yeah. I'm looking at him, his ability to run the football out of the backfield, his ability mm-hmm. to pass catch and to make plays with his feet after the catch. Plus, you've got Ron Rivera who wants to sit up there and cut down on the running plays of Cam Newton. And no matter how much Cam Newton's going to complain, the fact, the fact is, Owner Richardson, along with Ron Rivera, they're going to do everything they can to protect their ultimate investment. And I yep. think in the case of Deshaun Watson, uh, B- uh, you know, Bill O'Brien and those boys are going to be relatively conservative because he's a rookie whenever he gets in as the starting quarterback this season. W- am I wrong about anything I said there? No, no, I'm 100% agreement. And I'll take it a step further and say this. The reason why, even more so, that you're right about running back having the bigger impact right out of the gate is because running back is a much more instinctive position where guys are kind of born to be runners. You don't have to teach runners very much about running the ball. You don't have to teach playmakers very much about play, you know, just making plays with the football, and Christian has that instinctively. And that's why you see runners come into the league all the time and take the league by storm, lead the league in rushing, lead the league in, you know, maybe receptions out of the backfield, what have you, be pro bowlers, all pros as rookies because it's an instinctive position. That's not to say that Deshaun won't have an impact on the Texans, but we know that's a much more cerebral position that you need more time. You need more time to get going. And who knows, maybe over the course of his career he has the bigger impact, but out of the gate there's no doubt. There's no doubt that Christian and runners in general are going to have a much bigger impact. And you hit a great point, too, about Bill O'Brien. Look, Bill has kind of handcuffed his quarterbacks in the past because of the way the team is built. If you have a strong running game and good defense, teams have won Super Bowls doing that. You don't have to have a passer win it for you. And he, will, he won't let his pass – he'll try to keep his passer from losing it for him. So with a young quarterback, of course he's going to try and protect him. And that, that's going to mute some of Deshaun's impact. But over the long haul – Deshaun got off to a real nice start last night. Regardless of what you saw from Carolina last night, do you believe that anybody has enough to knock off Atlanta within this division? I know Tampa Bay's on to come up in the NFC South. You can never underestimate Drew Brees and that high-octane offense, even though I think the loss of Brandon Cooks is going to hurt them immensely. Uh, but I just look at Atlanta as being a juggernaut who know mm-hmm. they missed a, a prime opportunity being up 25 points in the Super Bowl and losing. I consider them highly motivated and highly skilled. What do you see? Yeah, I, I think Atlanta will be better this year than than they were last year because of the fact that they have Don Terry Poe now, who should, as long as his back holds up, be someone who really solidifies the middle. Tack McKinley, who they drafted out of UCLA, should help Big Beasley as far as two edge rushers. Mm-hmm. Desmond Trufant is back now who was their best cover corner. You think they couldn't have used him in the Super Bowl? Of course, they could have used him. He would have made a difference. But I will say this. The Packers are right there as far as being able to light up the scoreboard, and I know how you feel about Aaron Rodgers. That's right. And here's, the th- here's the thing about the Packers, though. See, they've been drafting DBs, drafting DBs, drafting DBs. They drafted two more this year, first and second round. They drafted Kevin King from the University of Washington, and then they drafted my man out of North Carolina State to safety. If those guys, all these young guys that they've been drafting in the secondary, they can eventually somehow now stay healthy and start making plays on the ball, which they couldn't do last year in any way, and Aaron had to outscore everybody, they've got a shot. Because on offense, now that they got Martellus Bennett, now that Ty Montgomery is solidified as a running back and they kind of know what they're going to do right from the get-go and not have to take all year long to figure out who they are, the Packers are going to be there. And, of course, you you can never discount Seattle. You can never – I mean, Carolina, look, nobody thought Carolina was going to go 15-1 when they did. So it's, it's fun. It, it's, a, it's a fun conversation to have in the NFC. But you're right. I think Atlanta is the favorite, and they should be stronger. But some of their, some of their competition have gotten pretty good, too. How much are we sleeping on or underestimating Seattle, considering the fact that last year Russell Wilson was hurt for pretty much the whole year? I think we're, we're underestimating their championship spirit, period and the fact that they are still a team that has a very definitive formula that they want to win with, which is run first, opportunistic play action passing second, let Russell do his thing. But on defense, that's where it has to, that's where they've got to go. That's where they've got to lead the charge. And that means that the Legion has to really retake kind of the lead, the lead on that team and set the tone throughout and I, I think you can never discount guys who are competitors like that. And to speak directly to your point about Russell being injured last year, what he really needs is that offensive line to stop getting him crushed. 
He needs to have that offensive line, have it not look like every time he drops back to pass, it looks like it used to look like in my backyard, which was run around, make something happen because he's running for his life. If they can do that and get back to some semblance of offense like they used to have when Beast Mode was there, which was very much so pound the ball, pound the ball, Russell, take him up over the top, pound the ball, pound the ball, Russell, you know, make one of those plays and the defense just play lights out. They won Super Bowls with it and came within one pass play of making a, of winning another one. So they'll be there. Louis Riddick, Louis Riddick, you know, belying my uh, emotional tendencies, I actually pride myself in being a very fair-minded individual. Except uh-huh. for when it comes to the Cowboys. I just can't stand their fans. <laughs> I can't stand uh-huh. their fans, Lewis. They get on my nerves, and I'm so happy that you were telling me that Atlanta should be the favorite. But I, I, in fairness uh, to this nauseating, delusional fan base that gets on my nerves, I know the Cowboys are good. But how much better, if at all, do you anticipate they will be this year compared to last year? Well, I think offensively they will be better because – Dak Prescott is the truth. Dak Prescott is a pro. Dak Prescott is highly, highly, highly skilled. And he's just going to benefit from having a whole offseason to know he's the man and now really start to fine-tune his game throughout the rest of his career. The offensive line is going to be legit. Zeke, you know, notwithstanding anything that's going to happen to him from a suspension standpoint, you would assume he's going to come back as, as, as good as ever. The problem with the Dallas Cowboys for me is, one, the schedule is brutal, and, two, the defense – Who's going to rush the passer? And who is going to cover in the back end? They've got a whole gang of new people back there, save for uh, Byron Jones, yeah. safety. And at the linebacker position, hey, I know Sean Lee stayed healthy last year, and Sean Lee's my guy. Now, Sean Lee is a legit linebacker. Yeah, but he's injury can he, prone. Can he do it? That's right. Can he do it again? And, and is Jalen Smith actually going to be able to play? I hope the guy he is. I hope he is as good as advertised as he was at Notre Dame, but that's a lot of ifs, man. A lot of ifs. And what about well, the Giants? A lot of other teams don't have those, that many ifs. What about the, the if that is the New York Giants? I mean, picking up Brandon Marshall, thank goodness, Sterling Shepard didn't get a season-ending injury. You still got Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. You got Eli Manning. What about the New York Giants? The only thing that scares me about the New York Giants is they don't run the ball. They can't run the ball, and they can't pass protect, and they have no left tackle. Now, they got skilled positions for days, and they will cut you a thousand different ways as far as throwing the football. But their offensive line is suspect. The left tackle position, both tackle positions are suspect. And you know in the NFC there are some people, there are some people who can get after the passer. And I just, look, I'm just not, I'm just not a believer. I'm not a believer that you can win in the NFL at the highest level, obviously, without an offensive line that can actually lead the way. We saw it last year. We saw how offensive lines got people kicked right out of the tournament, as I like to say, once the, once the heat was turned up. And I think that's what's going to happen to the Giants. Not to say that look, their, their perimeter weapons are legit across the board, man. Evan Ingram, I think, is going to be an absolute freak. We talk about O.J. Howard in Tampa. Why do you see Evan Ingram? The people in the SEC who I talk to, and I talk to some pretty – Pretty high power people down to say this. When they play Ole Miss and every Ingram was on the field, no one they had no one who could deal with them. No one. No one. And they got a legit defense. But they can't run the rock. And how many times we see Eli last year just taking the ball, drop back, have Russ in his face, and just throw the ball in the dirt because he's like, I'm not taking these hits. Yeah. That's a problem. Last question for you. Are the Jets gonna be the worst team in football? Or is there somebody else that's on your list? Man, man, I hope not. I hope that they're not. But they I, – I will say this. None of the people I know up there, they do like how the team is coming together as far as chemistry right now and how they're they working They don't have together. a quarterback, Lewis. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right about that. But I, I'm saying there are some things, though, about them – that may mitigate them being the worst team, but they're going to be in contention for it because they just don't have the horse. Should they, the quarterback position, you're right, is bad. Should it's they bad. bring Colin Kaepernick to New York? <sighs> should they? From Yeah, they should. A lot of teams should have brought Colin Kaepernick in by now, at least for a look, at least. Mm. But that's a whole different story. You're the man. Appreciate you, Lewis. Right. Thanks a lot. As always, buddy. Thank you. You got it. Thank you, Steve. All right. The one and only Lewis Riddick right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. He's right. He's right on both counts. He said, hey, you should. A lot of teams should bring Colin Kaepernick in, at least to take a look. But that's a whole different story. And that ain't for him to get into. That's my job. More to Stephen A. Smith on ESPN Radio in a minute. 
Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm -hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Stephen A. Smith, y'all. When it comes to our cars, one thing is almost certain, something that sometime is going to break down. And if your vehicle warranty is expired, one big repair can break your bank. There are auto protection plans out there, of course, but only one stands alone. That's Toco Warranty. With Toco, you don't pay upfront fees for service you may never use. Toco makes protecting your car easy with their pay-as-you-go plan. Just pay a small amount each month and keep the protection for as long as you like. With Toco, there is no long-term contract, no upfront fees, and you can cancel at any time. So get peace of mind knowing you are protected with coverage plans on the engine, electrical, transmission, cooling system, drive axle, and more. Plus, enjoy the benefits of roadside assistance and paid rental car fees. Toco's special, con special concierge service guides you through the entire process from sales to claims to customer service, all under one roof. Don't risk being grounded by auto repairs you can't afford. See if you qualify for Toco at 800-211-2884. That's 800-211-2884. That's 800-211-2884. To the phones we go in just a minute. That's... uh. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Um, before I do that, though, did y'all hear about that CBS poll? Some CBS polls out there, you know, rating, you know, the most overrated coaches. Jim Harbaugh was on the list, Michigan. I don't agree with that, but at the same time, you know, you got people who want to hate on him. He hasn't won a national championship. He gets a lot of hype and all of this other stuff. You see him on the airwaves all the time. So, all right, I got that. But here's where the blasphemy officially kicks in. Nick Saban is number two on the most overrated coaches list. Somebody smoking something. 11 years at Alabama. Nick Saban, 119 and 19. And he overrated. If he overrated, the entire profession deserves to be jobless. Because who's better? Who? Who is this person? You know what Alabama was when before Nick Saban arrived? We were still talking about Bear Bryant from the 60s and 70s. What y'all talking about? Oh, these people are crazy. Some people are just nuts. To the phones we go. JP in Brooklyn, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? JP, are you there? JP, are you there? Bye, JP. Jay and Cali, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, uh, Stephen A? Uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, one, when it comes to Zach Randolph, uh, and I haven't read the report, but I know that being in California, it depends on how he had it packaged. It depends on how he had his money in his pocket. Mm -hmm. So let's say he had two, three thousand dollars in his pocket. Mm -hmm. If he got twenties, so let's say he got three hundred and one uh, bundle. I don't mm -hmm. want to call it a bundle. Let's okay. say he got three hundred and one uh, fold, and then he got like seven hundred and another one, mm -hmm. and then the money isn't all facing the same way. And then it depends on how he had the uh, the marijuana package. So when you put those two things together, they might not have wanted to arrest him, but to take his money, they're going to make him file forfeiture papers so he could get his well, money well, back. Well, well let me say this. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me say this to you. I appreciate the education. I'm not questioning any kind of science you're dropping on me. What I'm okay. addressing and what I'm attacking is if you don't literally witness somebody intending to sell, I have a problem with a charge being intent to sell. Well, That's that my is issue. State of California. I totally understand that. And another thing is, you know, at first I didn't hear you about your voting thing with Colin Kaepernick. I didn't agree with it, but you broke it down. And when you broke it down, I totally agree with you on where you're coming from. On uh, And I really, really disagree with you, Stephen A. Yeah. But when you broke down what you were saying, because um, you got to remember, there's a lot of people that don't know. I'm older than a lot of these kids are. 
and I don't really understand the magnitude of what people were going through back in the day. But when you have a face like Colin Kaepernick to, uh, for, for what people are going through today, when you have his face up there, it's going to bring attention to some things that a lot of kids, a lot of people didn't know was going on. And when he says things like, I, I'm not voting or I don't vote in the way that he said it, that's a real powerful message to the youth to the people who can make a difference in this country. I don't mean to just switch uh, topics like that, but I know you got to get to other callers. But I just wanted to say I totally agree with what you're saying. I, I think that he was a fool for opting out of his contract, and I think that he should give a little bit more statements if he's going to stand for a cause, because for right now, I don't agree with him. I tried to tell you last Friday, I feel like he a compromising his uh his stands on what he's uh, standing for. He was all over the place, out. Jay. He want people like you, me, and everybody else to stand up for him. He had no plan, and now he barely has a voice. No plan is the word. I mean, the way that it is, I don't want to say anything because then for future people, I don't want them to opt in and cause, and cause havoc. But come on, man. You got Twitter. You got all of these outlets. You see how people are misinformed on what they think you're standing for, and the first thing you do. Hey, Jay, I'm losing your signal. Your voice is correct way you your, can. your voice is cracking up. Jay, I'm gonna leave you with this, and I'm gonna close the segment on this note. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down with what I'm about to say to you? Are you sitting down, Jay? With all the noise, Colin Kaepernick and his stance has made. The most noise over the last few weeks hasn't been the petitions, hasn't been the, 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 the imminent protest. It's been his girlfriend putting out that tweet about Bashadi and Ray Lewis. And we wondering why he's still without a job. More to Stephen A. Smith show on ESPN Radio. By the way, let me also say this, please. I'm going to remind you all, America. I know a lot of you have already gotten a zebra. And you're getting happy Z's as a result. By the way, you're welcome. As for the rest of you, what's the holdup? There's too many of you snoring and being a nuisance to everybody around you. So you need to stop procrastinating and deal with this now. And that means getting a zebra. Why do I know there are millions still snoring? Because I used to be one of you. It's just that simple. I know you're still snoring because Zipa gets reports every time I talk about their product on my radio show. They know you went to their website, Zipa.com. They know you clicked through all the five-star testimonials and watched the video proving it works. They also know that you actually went through the process of putting a Zipa in your shopping cart. So do me a favor, please. Finish the process and get a Zipa already. Listen, people, your snoring's not going to stop until you get a Zipa. Don't care what it costs. Sleep is priceless. You would know this if you got a Zipa. And read the message inside the box. I'm telling you to get a Zipa. Stop procrastinating. Go to Zipa.com right now. That's Z-Y-P-P-A-H dot com. Remember, Zipa is easy to remember. You know why? Because it's happy Z spelled backwards. Back to your calls in a minute. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Told y'all. A little early in the show that um, I missed yesterday's show because I was in Las Vegas. I had to interview Floyd Money Mayweather for his upcoming fight against Conor McGregor, scheduled for August 26th. And um, in order to get back, uh, catch a flight, get back in time, uh, I had to skip radio yesterday. But I'm back today. Uh, but I wanted to play a couple of snippets from my interview with him. wanted you to hear for yourself. The voice of Floyd Money Mayweather. He's called into this radio show before, but I wanted you to hear him on this uh, particular fight and some of the other issues coming up. Just just a snippet. I sat down with him for 45 minutes. Uh, you'll be seeing most of it the week of the fight. A couple of snippets of it prior to that, of course. Here's one of them you can listen to. Listen in. Stephen A. Smith, yours truly, with Floyd Money Mayweather. Floyd Money Mayweather. Uh, yes, yes. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why uh, are we getting ready to watch Floyd Money Mayweather in the ring against Conor McGregor August 26th? Oh, uh, man. Um, it's what the world demanded. Um, I put myself in the right position uh, to make it happen. So I put myself in the right position to make it happen. Um, it's all about chess. Mm -hmm. And it's not really about being on the chess board anymore. It's about controlling the chessboard, and you know that's what I was able to do. How has how did Floyd Money Mayweather control the chessboard with this particular fight? Well, easy, you know I I knew what to say, 
you know, well, I know when to say it. Um, I know what to post on social media. And um, I know, you know, some, some cool people in some cool places um, to make certain calls, to, you know, to make this big event happen. Floyd Mayweather is loving this because for once he has someone who's helping him promote absolutely absolutely could you talk about that how difficult life has been for you over the last few years because you felt like you had to do most of the promoting it was hard it was hard I mean and this guy he stepped up to the plate one thing about him I could say he stepped up to the plate and I he played he played a major role you think he meant it everything that he said about you um I just didn't like when he called us monkeys. I think that was totally disrespect. I didn't hear that. I know he called boy. I know he said boy. I didn't hear yeah, monkeys. He called us monkeys. And so I didn't like it. It didn't push a button to make me, you know, jump all out my character and, and go crazy, but I didn't like it. But I'm strong, smart, patient, and come August 26th, be the same person. Smart, strong, patient, and the same way he called us monkeys. We're going to see if he said that August 26th. We see Conor McGregor, UFC, knockout artist. Yes. But someone who has never stepped in a boxing ring professionally. He's still a warrior. He's still a fighter. He's still a warrior. He's still a fighter. And every time Conor McGregor has went out there in the UFC and he's and he was victorious, he was standing up. Only time he took an L is when he was on the ground. But every time he stood up, he kicked ass. And my man Max Kellerman swears there's no way on earth you'll even get touched in this fight. He predicted you won't even get touched. Is that where you are? Are you prepared for that, not to be touched? This can't be a defensive fight. Excuse me? I got to go to him. I got to go to him. Are you saying that you're going to go to Conor McGregor? I got to go to him. You're not going to back up. You're going to go to him. I have to go to him. Why? I got to do what I got to do. Why? If you didn't have to go through to go to other fighters in order to beat them. Why do you feel the need to do that in this fight? Because I owe the, I owe the public for the Pacquiao fight. Since they wasn't pleased with the Pacquiao fight, they're going to they're going to be they're going to be pleased with this fight right here. Have you entertained the possibility of how disastrous this would be if a miracle happened and he actually beat you and you lost? Have you entertained that at all? Have you thought about it? Have you dreamed about it? Have there been nightmares about it? Floyd? When a fight gets, gets to the, when, you, when you're fighting at this level, there's no loser. When you're fighting at this level, there's no loser. I mean, I ain't never known a man to make hundreds and hundreds of millions, that's a loser. I'm gonna walk out that ring with my head high. I'm a fighter. What about your hand? Is your hand gonna be raised high? I'm gonna walk out the ring happy. Losing is never in my mind. I just say things can happen. And if it happens, and Floyd Mayweather walked out with a stain on his record, it wouldn't affect you. God, You'd be all right. My mother, and my mother and my children are still going to love me the same way. I'm still going to have the same lavish lifestyle. Life going to go on. They're going to move on to the next. That was Floyd Money Mayweather with George Truly. I don't want to hear that last comment from him. I don't believe he's entertaining losing at all. I think he recognized that if he lost this fight, it would be the biggest upset in boxing history because one of the greatest ever will be in the ring with somebody who's never boxed professionally in their life. And suddenly you're going to sit up there and you're going to beat Floyd Money Mayweather? That would be disastrous for Floyd Mayweather as far as I'm concerned. And that's why I know I don't believe him when he says that. That is just, I can take it. Life will go on. It'll be all right. You know, by the way, sticking to this particular subject, I'm not going to get into too many details. If I have to in the future, I will. But I'm going to say this. I was on a radio station um, yesterday and the host going to remain nameless because I don't want to get personal unless I have to. But I really, really don't. 
um, I was being interviewed, and I thought I was being interviewed by Tom Brady. And the next thing you know, not only does the man slide in the comment of, you know, Floyd Mayweather, which is understandable because I did just go interview the man and it was on Sports Center. But he brought up how I'm yucking around with Floyd Mayweather and he's a domestic abuser and he abused women and how can I do that? You know, I get tired of those kind of questions. I'm a sports reporter, I'm a journalist. There are a lot of unsavory characters that get interviewed. Mike Tyson was convicted of rape. And I've seen him laughing on Conan O'Brien. Nobody brings that up. He's got his own show. He had his own show on Broadway. Time and time and time again, we see unsavory characters or people with checkered past. They get interviewed. And no one says anything. And this particular person came at me as if I was condoning domestic violence, which I have nor would I ever do. I didn't mind the questions about Floyd Mayweather. But you don't preface a question by accusing me of condoning domestic violence. I would never do that to somebody. It's irresponsible as far as I'm concerned. But I'll leave it at that. Unless I have to revisit it, which I doubt I will. But it's just amazing to me that folks forget this stuff. Things happen. Ten years ago, what am I supposed to do? Ask him about it every time I see him? He went to jail. He did his time. And if he did it again, he should be banned from the sport. And he should have been banned at the time it happened. But once it's over, it's over. Has he broken the law since? Has it happened since? Ain't hanging out having dinner. Having breakfast and hanging out and partying? No. I'm doing my job. And then I go home. Others should try that sometimes. To the phones we go. Mustafa, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up, Mustafa? How are you? I'm doing good, brother. I hope your family's staying strong. Don't listen to what these people say, man. You know you do your job to the best of your ability. That's all you can do. You know who cares? No, I just want to make sure I got I got radio as my platform. I'm just gonna make sure my 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 position is clear, and then you move on. But go ahead. Yeah, buddy. So, anyways, I'm here to talk boxing with you today. I listened a few days ago. You were talking to Bob Arum. I think it was a few days ago or last week. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he said that. Yes, yes, and he was saying that Lomachenko, Lomachenko, best fighter. Yeah, yeah, was the best fighter since Muhammad Ali. And I was like, yo, this doesn't make any sense. I got I to gotta look up this guy because I never heard of him. Because I, I, I'm in North America. You know, most people here don't know about him. So I looked him up. I watched him on Saturday, and he tore this guy up, man. And his footwork, his speed, the, 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 the amazing balance between an offensive fighter and a defensive fighter. He's right in front of his opponent, and his opponent can't even touch him once. I mean, that was incredible, man. But the only criticism uh, against him is he only had eight or nine professional fights, right? But but his his amateur record was 396 and one. That's still incredible. 396 and one. I mean, that's 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 nothing to sneeze at. I mean, this guy is up and coming. Uh, No, he's 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 the star of the division. This kid, Javante Davis, that's in Floyd Money Mayweather's camp, I I interviewed him too. He's 18 and 0 with 17 KOs. The kid is special. Uh, But but is he he ready for Lomachenko? It remains to be seen. But I like the kid. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm more looking forward to this fight on September 16th. Who you got if you have to pick? I'm going with Triple G all day. Triple G all day. But we'll get into that after the Mayweather Conor McGregor fight, but I'm going with, with Triple G to beat Canelo. I got to run, Mustafa. I appreciate the call. 866-729-ESPN. Your call is to close out the show in a minute with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Phones we go before we get on out of here. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Real quick, make your comments, and I got to go. Sergio on the Bronx, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, I just wanted to say something about Colin Kaepernick. Go ahead. Uh, 
So I agree with you on most of your stances, but I know a lot of times you like to kind of dog them out on the voting thing. Uh, and when when it comes to the voting, he made his stance clear as far as his, his stance was against systemic oppression, you know, so he didn't want to vote for a lesser evil, you know. And another thing is you always get on him about the voting, which is, all right, that's just, I don't, I don't hardly hear you talk about his benevolence. You know, he does a lot of charity. But that's a, you know, you know what, you know what, Sergio, that's fair. That's fair. Perhaps I need to talk more about that. That's fair on your part. What I will say to you is that I will never apologize, nor will I ever relent on a voting issue, because if you want to be somebody that's a conduit of change, the, one, the number one instrument of change in this country, other than money itself, is the ability to exercise your right to vote. And if you don't vote, that's fine. That's your personal business. But to announce to the world that you don't vote when you know you're inspiring young minds and you want them to facilitate change, if they never vote, how can things get done? Call me back tomorrow when we have more time so I can give you the time and the respect that you deserve for the position that you took, Sergio. And I thank you for the call. Richard, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, go ahead. Hey, hey, Stephen. Um, So Fidel Castro's shirt had Malcolm X, and it was a salute to Malcolm X being open-minded to meeting Fidel Castro. It was never about Fidel Castro or him trying to prove a point to the Miami Dolphins. Stop right there. Miami in general. Stop right there. Doesn't matter. You know why, Richard? Because that's not how the people of Cuban descent particularly in the city of Miami, took it. That's the issue. You're talking about the, you're talking about the message. I'm talking about how it's, it was interpreted and by whom. I hate to break it down to you like that because I understand the truth is very important, but sometimes perception usurps that. And in the case of Colin Kaepernick, he slipped on that one. Your signal's bad, Richard. Are you in a cell phone area? I can't hear you. Call back tomorrow. Tommy, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick. Go ahead, Tommy. Hi. How are you? Hey, you. How's how's everything going? I know. You know, I love my Stephen A. Love, so I was getting on these lines today. (laughs) I appreciate that. Go ahead. Yes, I know it's quick. Um, The two things that I want to point out is uh, you did great with that. Excellent, actually. You were the knockout in that rink interviewing Floyd Mayweather. I think you you asked great questions, and um, you can't. Ask him everything every time. You know, I don't know why people expect that. Well, they they want what they want me to do is they want me to denigrate him about the whole domestic violence issue and what have you. First of all, he went to jail. Secondly, I interviewed him when he got out of jail. Secondly, right. privately and publicly, I held I thought I held him accountable in that regard. But at the same time, he's also in my face on several occasions yes. in the past, categorically and emphatically denying that there was any truth to what he was charged for and ultimately he pled to. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Berate yeah, him I don't or berate think him every time. Revisited every time. What am I supposed to do? to him exactly. exactly and um to sum that up and i love that contrast of that black cuff you had on that shirt yes that was Ooh. really remarkable and third is secondly uh the picture for colin that his girlfriend posted colin i Kaplan. really yes. don't think that represented standing by your man that was not standing by him in front of him and back of him or beside him it was wrong absolutely and i don't Tommy, yeah, I don't think it helped at all. tommy i've got to get on out of here but i'd like to say before you leave that your brilliance continues to amaze me and you just amaze me. And I can deal with just snoring any day or night. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let me let me let me get off the air. I, I, I gotta watch myself. I gotta watch myself, y'all. 866-729 ESPN. We're about to get on out of here for the day. Thank you all for your listening in, tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. I don't have any road trips or anything like that that's gonna impede my schedule and prevent me from being on the air. So I will be back here in twenty two hours. Remember what I told you about C P three? And when he passed up the 200 plus million for the Clippers, betting on himself in Houston next season, how Carmelo and him trying to get something going so they could both get paid. I don't know if that's going to work. That, more Kaepernick, more NFL stuff, NFL preseason weekend tipping off. We know what time it is after Houston and Carolina went at it last night. I'll be back with you in 22 hours. Until then, peace.